Hey everybody, welcome to Gemstone Chronicles. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. Excited. <laughs> and I've got uh, Michael back with me. Hi y'all. And uh, we're going to be discussing diamonds yes. uh, today. Uh, and you've got a background. You, or you you went to GIA for diamonds grading or no? Uh, actually, I did the full GG program. So what, um, what, Okay. It starts, you do six weeks of diamonds. Okay. And then the rest of the six months is all color stones. Okay. You know, limited information about diamonds because it's only a single stone, and there's a million different other color stones. So they want you to focus a little more on that. But you get a good. Uh, a yeah, good well, color's more that. difficult, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah there's, there's just so many. Uh, there's so many different stones out well, there. Well, that's the thing. Yeah, the diamonds are diamonds. They have very, no matter what color, they're all very similar properties. Yeah. You know, gemologically speaking, but so there's only so much you can learn about how to identify a diamond. Yeah. Now. Uh, I never took a, cl a class, but I was told you do it by eliminating what it's not. You take away what it's not to find out what it is. To a degree, yeah. That's okay. definitely true. So let's for uh, refractometer is one of the most common gemological tools. Um, for example, quartz has a very, very uh, standard 155 on a refractometer. And that's singly refractive also or doubly refractive? Uh, quartz, quartz is doubly. Okay, I think this is Greek to me. Well, a little Greek. Yeah. A little French. Very few stones are actually singly refractive. You got diamonds. Okay. Diamonds are probably the most popular. Garnets and spinel okay. are probably the big three. Okay. So. Uh, I wish blue topaz one, or aquamarine was one of them, so it would be easier to differentiate between ah, Well, <laughs> with a refractometer, it's super easy. Yeah. Yeah, not for me. <laughs> not not for me. We used to we used to deal in the digital refractometers, the gem meter nineties, and right. all that kind of fun, fun stuff. They don't make anymore. All right, so uh, let's go over some term. We're going to talk about diamonds. Uh, diamonds is April it's birthstone. April's birthstone. Uh, and, and let's get some uh, definitions out of the way. So um, crystallized carbon. Crystallized carbon. Is the, the down and dirty, quick and easy explanation. Okay, what would uh, cubic zirconia be? Not. Not carbon. exactly, but what would what would you call it? What would so, you... Uh, so you're talking about like a simulant versus? Yes, a... exactly. Okay. So a CZ, a piece of glass, uh, colorless yag, moissanite, uh, moissanite. Those are all diamond simulants. And simulants meaning they look similar, but they are not the same material. Okay. Now, lab-grown diamonds are technically synthetic, which means they have the same physical, optical, and chemical properties. So just like lab-grown rubies, lab-grown emeralds, uh, lab-grown quartz, those are all synthetics because they are the same chemical composition and they have the same properties. So when you put the colored stones, you can't put a diamond on a refractometer. That's another story. Right. But when you put a colored stone, a colored synthetic, let's say a synthetic emerald, a Chatham emerald, mm -hmm. and you put a genuine out-of-the-ground emerald, they're going to read exactly the same yep. on a refractive index, whereas a piece of broken traffic light green traffic light we <laughs> talked about that last week with uh -huh. travis right uh would read as glass right uh, completely different readings yeah. completely different because readings. they're different materials okay but in in those stones i really don't want to get into color but in those stones you use a microscope and there's actually growth lines that you can see yeah. to tell synthetic from natural not with diamonds no Diamonds yeah. are a whole different complicated ball game yeah. for people in the industry, gemologists, jewelers. Well, how do you tell a lab-grown diamond from a natural diamond? You send it to a lab. You send it to a lab. <laughs> <laughs> I, what about those machines? I've seen machines for seven hundred to ten thousand to ten thousand dollars. Um, as awesome as they are, they are not one hundred percent perfect. And they will not tell you definitively if something is lab-grown or synthetic. Right. It say they'll tell you to refer that particular diamond to a laboratory. Yeah. Let's get a little technical. How many different types of real diamond? Not forget lab. How many types of real different? There. Uh, how many different types of real diamonds are there? Uh, let's. Uh, there's at least five. There's five. So you have types type one and type two okay and then each of those are broken down into type 1a 1b okay 2a 2b and okay. then there's a and b's that are mixed together okay <laughs> so the the detector mm -hmm. tells what type of diamond it is yes. so type 2a diamonds are for the most i mean they're kind of an anomaly when it comes to diamonds they make up such a small percentage of natural diamonds 
and that's what most synthetic or lab grown diamonds are. Right. I, I was hearing it could be up to ten percent. Or is that wrong? Am I in the naturals or in the naturals? Oh, I think it's actually lower than that. It's lower than that, but that presents a problem because the detector will tell you it's a Type Two A diamond, but it may be a natural Type Two A diamond, and therefore has to be referred referred to a lab instead of saying this is definitely lab grown. No, I can just tell you you need to send it off for further testing. All right, we're not going to talk about pricing on those. That's that's something uh, we're going to get with somebody else that has a jewelry store down in Naples. Uh, okay, uh, you know, you, you know, I have no problem with lab-grown diamonds, and I know you oh, have no. no problem with that. They well, they have a, they have their place in the market. So, do you think that they have pulled the price down of natural diamonds? They ha- well, that's they, they have one hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, historically speaking, diamonds have gone up in value um, over this last, I'd say, two years when they've started getting really good and really fast at growing diamonds. It has pulled down the natural prices. So yeah, that's 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 a problem for those people that have been holding the diamond dealers that have been holding on to diamonds. Yeah, have got a problem. Well, it's true, yeah. and, and I will be the first one to tell you. And I will not sell a diamond as an investment. Well, yeah, if a jeweler tells you that this is going to go up in value, it's I'm sorry, all, but no, they're not they're not Miss Cleo, and, and <laughs> they're not licensed to even give that kind of advice, whether it's gold coins diamonds or anything else a jeweler a jewelry store is not licensed to do that and you should not take advice on that i had a a a a relative once removed come into the store the other day that was looking to buy gold and silver coins Mm -hmm. and the only advice that i gave him we don't sell them Tell him where you can go locally. And I said, you know, we're at the high point of the market. Yeah, you're and, buying at the peak. Yes, and the only people that make money on diamonds are those of us in the business. Right. And even that doesn't work out so well sometimes. <laughs> but yeah, not an investment. No. Sure, maybe you buy a diamond and 30 years down the road, you could sell for more. Maybe, Right. but you would have been better off buying Berkshire Hathaway stock. Yeah. Or real estate, actually, because I, there's only there's a finite amount of real estate, right. and because you can make diamonds in a quote unquote laboratory, which it's not, it's a factory, right. but that's okay. Uh, there is an infinite exactly. amount, so that's yeah. a problem. Well, what we're, we're going to do with today, everybody knows, I think, in our audience uh, out there, knows what diamonds look like normally. Normally, what you've brought are some interesting... I'm not normal. Yes. <laughs> uh, That's so, why I like you. <laughs> so I don't tend to bring normal things. So. Okay. So we're going to go over that. You've got uh, about a dozen stones, half a dozen stones. Oh, I brought, well, I, I could have brought 50, but I tried to uh, pare it down. Hoarder. Hoarder. Diamond hoarder. At least my <laughs> at least the things I hoard are only this big. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, and I brought some different colored diamonds. I brought a couple of different uh, diamond crystals to show okay. you some of the different uh, forms they come Oh, cool. Cool. And a bunch of different shapes. All right. Well, we're going to uh, start showing that in three, two, one. All right. All right. Let's kill this. All right. What do we got? What'd you bring us? I brought some fun goodies. Um, okay. we'll, we'll start with diamond crystal shapes. All right, I'll get these out of your way. And I'm not handling the tweezers today, so uh, Michael's handling the tweezers. He's uh, a more professional tweezer handler than I am. Yeah, I do it on, you know, all day, every day. So diamonds are, again, one of the few gemstones or minerals in nature that we use as gemstones that form in the cubic crystal system. So they're singularly refractive, meaning when light travels through them, it stays as one ray of light. It doesn't get broken into two or sometimes, you know. Two. How do we explain that better? Because <sighs> it's like, uh, but, yeah, it's, it's not like a prism where it breaks up the light. It's the opposite of a prism. So yeah, well in diamonds, it stays as a, as one right, one beam of light enters the stone and it exits okay. as a single beam. As right. A, and when you have most other stones like quartz, ruby, topaz, that material, calcite's a really good example, breaks it up into two different uh, rays of light and it makes it look doubled. Is that singly refractive and doubly refractive? Yes. Aha! Yes. Now with a diamond, the point would be to cut it well where the light comes in the top and then exits back through the top again. Right. 
So what are, what are we looking at that I'm holding So here? the one you're holding is what's called a Mackle, and it is a twinned diamond crystal that okay. has a flat triangular form. Sometimes they're, uh, they almost look like triangular pieces of glass that they're, you know, clean, So this grew like a triangle, the screw. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then they faceted it? No, this is completely natural. Oh, this is how, how cool it, is this that? This is how it came out of the ground. Yeah. Okay. So, so no no mackles faceted. That's how it comes out of the ground like this. Right. And out of this shape is where they usually cut things like trillions. They will cut trapezoids, yep. uh, shields. You know, something that keeps that same shape so you don't lose too much when you do the cutting. You'll never believe what I saw today. I saw a black squirrel diamond. <laughs> I did. I did. So it was uh, in one of the groups that were in a black squirrel diamond. Oh, that's... And it was good. It wasn't like some of those really bad horse heads. Uh -huh. You know, no, this was really good. Oh, that's cool. All right. Now, so, what have we got here? This one is what most people think of when they think of a diamond crystal. This is an octahedron. So okay. It's like two pyramids put base to base. Oh, okay. You see it that way. Everybody see that? Hmm? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And this is uh, one of the most I don't know, economical, one of the better shapes when you find crystals in because you can actually cut two diamonds out of the same crystal. Okay. And they'll be larger than pretty much any other crystal shape. Okay. So you You'll have very little that. loss on this. Right. right. Okay. So it's got eight faces, six points. And again, it's just one of the more common, uh, easy to work with shapes. And you're not going to find this in your backyard. <laughs> Unless your backyard happens to be... Hot uh, Arkansas, yeah, right? <laughs> crater, crater of Diamonds in Arkansas. Yeah, that's the only um, place that you can find diamonds in uh, the United States. Is that correct? Or well, is it's there... the only diamond mine in the world open to the public where you can right. keep what you find. You pay a small fee and you go and dig. Yeah. I was there, uh, actually, when I was leaving Georgia to go to San Diego to go to GIA, I stopped there for three days in the middle of July. <laughs> not, not recommended, by the no, way. No, that's pretty hot. Um, I was there for three days. Didn't find anything, unfortunately. But the, the gentleman next to me did. He actually oh, wow. found a little third of a carat mackle similar to that one. Um, and the one you're holding now is a cube. So it's, uh, you know, just like it sounds, it's a very cubic in nature. Has six faces. and This is what I'm familiar with yeah. in the cubes. And this is not a gem quality stone by yeah. any means. But it has a nice crystal structure, which is why I got it. This would be good for some of our customers if it had a hole drilled through it oh, yeah. where they could go and make a ring and then mount it you know with a uh, a silver rod going through mm -hmm. it and burnish the ends of it yeah yeah a lot of times they'll they'll find these and they'll they'll actually use these in jewelry so this is a yeah. very popular uh look for yeah. jewelry crystals that's really cool yeah. all right what else we got oh uh, this is one of my most fun things um, okay and this is basically just a polished crystal now they did put some facets on it but this is a, it, they keep the same structure, but this is a faceted diamond crystal that has hydrogen clouds on the inside. Ooh, that's a really good one. The light's reflecting off of the clouds on the interior of the diamond. Oh, that's cool. I remember Travis was talking about a trapeze, which is that spoked look. This yeah. actually has a hydrogen gas, uh, gas cloud with a trapeze like look to it. Cool. Very uncommon, very rare, and always fun. Cool. Let me uh, turn out this light because I'm getting reflection back on it. There we go. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. What else we got? Uh, well, <laughs> these are and these are actually relatively new in the diamond world. They've been around for centuries and probably millennia in different stones, but diamond cabochons. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. Oh. These are Where's my loop -loop? ridiculously <laughs> fun. <clears throat> Excuse me. But I've been, uh, actually I found these in Tucson this year. And that one's in a really nice like brownish yellow kind of golden color. So there's no facets, is there facets? On they're, well, they're, the girdle's faceted. The girdle's faceted. Which to me is a little strange, but. Oh, well, I think it'll help with the light if, I, because, and I could be wrong, but will a cabochon bend light, that shape? Uh, it it yeah it does bend light, but it doesn't it doesn't throw sparkle like a faceted stone was. Right, there's really no facets. But to bend the light and hit the girdle and reflect that back, no. 
I'm really in, reaching here, aren't I? Well, no, no, no. <laughs> you, you, you're, you're on the right track. Uh, with colored diamonds, the, they usually have wide or thick girdles mm -hmm. to help the light bounce around inside the stone longer. So uh, when it eventually does leave the stone back to your eye, the color looks more intense. Right. So, but yeah, so these are... And we talked about bellies last week with, uh, with the emeralds. Yeah. The emeralds. Do they ever do a sugar loaf cut? I've I, never seen one. That would be cool. But I'd buy one. Yeah, I, especially with with rough like this, for the fun of it to cook sugar to cut oh, yeah. into a sugar loaf would be really cool. The problem, with, especially with, like with that uh, that cube, is to try to get it smooth. Okay. That would be the more difficult. Oh part. yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that it's not for the faint of heart. No. All right. Let's get uh, lids on here because I don't want accidents to happen. Yeah, well, leave it to me to do it. Yeah, me too. There I go, trying to put the wrong lid on the wrong. That's all right. Yeah. But. Um, all right, what do we got next? I'm all about unique, fun, and different. So here's another really fun shape. A Christmas tree. Ah, Christmas tree diamond. They do uh, letters and diamonds. Uh, letters, they do numbers. numbers. I've seen ducks. I've uh, seen bats. I've seen horse cats. heads. Very popular. Yeah. Uh, I've seen X-rated. <laughs> uh, we are... can only imagine that what that is. I don't mm -hmm. understand why. Um, Cadillac, the Cadillac emblem. It, it's it's funny you say that. That's why I brought my ring. Yeah. Okay. Let's so this see. is a ring I made for myself many moons ago, but. This has Cadillac, what they call caddy cuts on yeah. the side. So I call this my uh, my Coca ring, C O C A. So it's a cobalt blue sapphire with caddy diamonds. So C O C A, cobalt <laughs> and caddies. That's really cool. That's a nice sparkly that uh, the Cadillac diamond. They're okay. really well done. I mean, they do throw light really nicely when yep. they're done well. And part of the reason that's part of the reason they're so expensive. Uh, they pay the cutter extra to be able to do that type of cut. Yeah. And uh, to that end, this one here, this is a, uh, a trapezoid. And, cool. But this is long and thin. And most diamonds, when you get to these type of proportions, are sold by length. Mm -hmm. The longer it is, the more you're going to pay. Yeah. And diamonds are not tough. You may not be able to scratch a diamond, but you certainly can break a diamond. Yes, and that's the biggest difference people don't realize between hardness and toughness. Right. Jade is tough. Jade is the toughest stone. Yes. Diamonds, not so much. No. They have four directions of perfect cleavage, so if you accidentally hit your diamond on one of those cleavage planes, well, now you're going to have two. <laughs> Who remembers that commercial that Ford did with the, was it the Granada? That they drove and cleaved a diamond in the back seat of it to show oh, the ride of it. That's right. I and then Saturday Night Live, they did a bris. <laughs> <laughs> in the back of it. I'm showing my age here, but those those vi those videos are online someplace. Oh yeah, I just saw uh, someone just posted an ad recently about that. Yes, that's, what that's why it reminded me of that. Yeah, they put that up. All right, what do we got next? Uh, something that's coming back into fashion are rose cuts. What's old is new again. Okay, rose cut is a flatter cut. So it's flat on the bottom, and they have usually triangular facets across the top. So it's almost like a faceted cabochon. Okay, how would this differ to a polky diamond? Polky diamonds are usually very, very, very flat. Very thin. And I, well, my, yeah. uh, my trapeche-like diamond I brought is okay. a polky style. Um, but yeah, they're very flat. They're very, very rudimentary. Cut. Yeah, we had polky rings we were selling in uh, 14 karat gold and sterling, so where the polkies went all the way around the mm -hmm. finger. Yeah, I remember those. I might get back into those again. Those were nice. I don't see yeah. why you wouldn't. The price was right. Well, I worried they didn't, they didn't make it strong enough. It was an eternity, went all the way around, and it was wire. So you can only imagine how many don't have the diamonds in it anymore. Oh, I can imagine, yeah. yeah. And here is that uh, polky style. This is the polky style. That looks like a trapeche. Look how thin it is. Well, look how, wow. It, it's probably, I think when I measured it, it was about a third of a millimeter. Yeah, and what, about a tenth of a carat, but has a spread of a three carat stone? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so this one is my trapeche like diamond. And they do a lot of this type of, not just in diamonds and rubies and sapphires, they do it in um, 
Indian uh, ceremonial for weddings. Yes, a lot of, a lot Mughal, of the Mughal jewelry. Style. Yeah, and there's a there's a, a retailer up in uh, New York, the Verma Group. I forget the name of his store that caters to that market. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, he's always looking for high carat gold, and I yes. wish I could sell it to him. He's also looking for uh, Mickey Moto pearls. I haven't figured that one out yet. Hey, he's got the market for it. Yeah. So good for him. Um, but yeah, this is a very unusual diamond, especially with that uh, that trapeche look to it. Ah, uh, fragile? Exceedingly fragile, fragile, just because okay. it's so thin. It's like a thin pane of glass. Yeah, and then some. Yeah, and again, diamonds are not tough, so it will crack. Yeah. What do we so got this here? is a fan-shaped diamond. Oop, we lost one. Oh, that's okay. It's not going anywhere. And then some... Oop, let me get that. Let's get the lid yeah, we'll off take of that. Off. So, and sometimes you will see three of these assembled to create a full, what looks like a round brilliant, but it's actually three of these smaller pie shapes. Right, we, we, we've seen that a lot in uh, less expensive jewelry. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, um, uh, what was that, Trivial Pursuit. Yeah, Where exactly. you get all those little, little pie shapes in there. Yeah, exactly. Each piece of pie creating a whole pie mm -hmm. makes it look like a whole diamond. Uh, I, before you get that, buy a lab-grown diamond. You'll save a lot of money. You'll have something much prettier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But again, I mean, pretty. when when one of those diamonds falls out or a prong breaks and you lose a diamond, then, you know, you end up with singles that you can do something fun with. Now, all these are available. If anybody wants to buy one of these, they can contact us. We'll get you your price on it. Not a problem. All right, next. So some fun little shields that are going to be used either as oh, these are nice. intermediate links and earrings, or if you have a nice center stone, these would make amazing side stones. Uh, yeah, that's the way I would go with these. Normally, you would see the trillions on the side, mm -hmm. which is a traditional 1980s. Halo, well, Halo was late 2000s, 2000 to maybe five years ago. Before that was the trillions on both sides of a princess. Yep. And uh, anybody have an idea what the future is going to be in engagement rings? I don't, do you see any trends? We're starting to move away from halos. Thankfully. Yes. They have, again, I like that it's a nice look, but yes. when it's literally every every style you see in a store, I think it gets a little well, dated. Well, we are doing thing. a halo for a customer, but with a tanzanite in the center. And that'll be beautiful. That's a... That's yeah. a it's a classic. It's look. a classic, exactly. It's a I mean, classic. Princess look. Diana's ring. Yes, was a, a beautiful halo style. Yes. Oh, well, instead of calling it a halo, you can call it a diamond surround and make it sound yeah. a little more. Little well, more I think company. I think actually the halo is different than diamond surround because halo is usually smaller diamonds set next to each other all the way around, mm -hmm. where you can actually do larger diamonds with the setting comes to a little point on each one of them around, so it's not a full halo around it. It's an accent. Right. Because before there were halos, there were accents. Yeah. All right. Um, and I brought this ring just because of the, the fun little side stones I used. I call this my rubellite rose with diamond thorns. Uh, okay. Let's zoom out zoom a back out on that one. So there these actually go. have, what, uh, I think well, some people call them shields, elongated shields, or sometimes some they're called bullets. Okay. But uh, so this would be yeah, my little spiky, uh, my thorns. They look good. The they look good. Lord knows better than a uh, pear shape. Oh, for sure. In that and better than marquee. Marquees are back in style. I hear. Marquees and pears came back with a vengeance. Yeah, I mean. And I love it. Yes. I am Marquees are cool. They are. As long as they're not doing waterfalls with them. Because 1980 called and they want their waterfall rings back. Yeah. Well, and speaking of pear shapes, for my 40th birthday, I made this one for myself. This is a... Vivid yellow from a very specific mine in West Africa called the Zimi, and it is known for its hyper yellows. If there was a if there was a category of fancy color beyond vivid, a lot of the diamonds coming from that Zimi mine would get that designation. So I'm gonna say something that's gonna get me slapped by every gemologist. So Pariba. <laughs> Sorry, no. No, strike that. Nobody heard that. <laughs> mm. I mean, the sentiment. I understand the sentiment, but yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. Whenever you get these like super vivid yellows, a lot of times they're uh, they're from that one specific mine. And what is the trace element that's causing that? Those are from nitrogen impurities. Okay. 
So, right. so it's a, a vivid yellow and a, and a perfectly colorless D, the best color you can get in a white diamond. Okay. So these are the uh, the two extremes, perfectly colorless and all of the color. Cool. All right, what else you got? Oh, this is my Crater of Diamonds ring. And this has shapes, colors. Oh, no wow. two diamonds are alike in this one. There's this pinks. is all different diamonds in here. Yep. All naturals, no lab growns. This is be, this was before lab growns became now, a thing. Are they treated in any way? The diamonds. Some of them are. So the blue one in my ring is definitely treated. Uh, there's a green princess cut in there that is irradiated, right. but the pinks and the yellows and the browns and the colorless diamonds, those are all natural color. That's cool. So this is my craters of di crater of diamonds. And you're right? not selling this, right? No, this okay. is my personal piece. Okay. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Love it. One of my favorites. All right, we got anything else? We oh, yeah. Show? Well, okay. uh, well, since we're talking about colors now. Oh, how about fluorescing? Oh, yeah. Flu oh, well, I have, a, I, have a, I, have a, I have a bracelet for that. This is your disco bracelet? <laughs> it is. Uh, there's so much sparkling here. Might as well be. So this is white gold with rounds on the, in the center and square emerald cuts on the outside. This is all right. The worst oh, UV right. light ever. I did bring a good UV light. Figure out what I did with it. Where'd it go? I've got one in my oh, office. But this one yeah. I bought specifically for gemstones. But if you yeah, uh, here let's let me consult it. There we go. Look at that. So some of the diamonds fluoresce nicely. I'm a big fan personally, um, but a lot of jewelers will tell you fluorescence is bad. Well, let's talk about that real quick. You bring in your diamond. You want to sell to the jeweler. <laughs> he brings out this light. This wicked black light mm -hmm. and they light up and they say well nobody wants diamonds so for us we're going to pay you less for it my response move on to somebody yeah. else because Keep that is a tool that they use to denigrate your goods to pay you less yep. the only time that fluorescing diamonds causes a problem is when it hazes the diamond to the naked yes. eye like you saw with the bracelet that one diamond was super fluorescent very yeah. strong blue yeah sometimes not all, sometimes it can actually make the stone, make the diamond look a little hazy. Yes, that would be when it denigrates it, but otherwise there's nothing wrong with a diamond that fluoresces. Not it's at just, all. Uh, it, it's puffery. Yeah. A, the opposite of puffery, it's suckery. You know? <laughs> they want to suck the money away from you and to them. Yeah. So here's a... But that could work in your favor if you're looking to buy a diamond yes. and it fluoresces, you could say to them, Hey, that fluoresces. I want a discount for it. Play their game. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. But also, it's a perfect example of guaranteeing the authenticity of a diamond. So if a diamond yes. fluoresces blue like that, it's guaranteed to be natural. That is correct because uh, type 2A diamonds do not fluoresce blue. They do fluoresce, and they fluoresce in some weird colors sometimes. Yeah. With special machines, what are we going to do? This, I'm trying to turn the brightness down on this one, but this is actually a... Yeah, I don't know what's going on with... A fancy white. I mean, we all know, quote, white diamonds, but they're yeah, technically colorless. Yeah. This one is a fancy white. This is a white. white. Well, can we put it in the tweezers? Because I think oh, yeah. that's where we're having the issue. Sure, sure, sure. Let me grab it real quick. So this actually has a bunch of sub-microscopic inclusions. Let's get this out and it this gives it um, almost like a milky white appearance there we go there we go yeah. steady yeah so it's a milky white diamond yeah is it Some fancy people, yes so it is okay. technically a fancy color fancy doesn't always mean more expensive yeah especially brown right. <laughs> And then we use euphemisms of uh, cognac diamonds. That's what you said. It's a man's cognac diamond. That was in the 80s when we yeah. sold those diamonds. And since we were talking about fluorescence, um, the ring that has all those different colors. Uh, yeah. There's one in here that fluoresces a, like a ridiculous green. There it is. There wow. it is. And diamonds yeah. can fluoresce, most common blue, but they can fluoresce white, yellow, orange, even red. Uh, some blue diamonds, like the Hope is a perfect example, fluoresces a rich, rich red. Now, in our industry, to looking at fluorescing of diamonds, we use a specific wavelength. It's 365. 365. Yes. <clears throat> and if, yeah. you, if, 
uh, we do sell those flashlights and they're like five bucks each or 10 bucks each that we sell them online for if you want to check out the diamonds and see if they fluoresce. But this is the uh, the chameleon diamond, the color change diamond. Yeah, now we're going to show you before and after of it. Uh, you were describing to me that when it's without light, yes. it's one color. And then when it's with light, it's it another color yeah. and it changes. So when this was sitting in the safe, just in the dark, it was a nice golden yellow color. And now it is like a grayish green. And uh, we'll have before and after pictures on yeah. that. Michael sent me pictures of that. Yeah. But it's uh, very uncommon, and we can, it's reversible. You can heat, heat the stone up with a lighter and a little metal tray, and it will change colors. And when it cools down, it'll change back. But scientists don't exactly know why it happens. Cool. And with as much technology as we have in this world, there are still some things that we cannot explain. This is the chameleon diamond in its two different stages. You can see it's clear and then it's yellow. I think it goes from yellow to green. It's a pretty cool effect. All right, what you got now? All right, next up is one of my favorites only because it's probably the most rare diamond I own and it is a natural blue. Oh, that's cool. It's a light blue. It is, so it's uh, it's not it's not technically in the fancy range. It's not a fancy blue. What do we call faint? Uh, there is a faint blue. This uh -huh. one, so it goes uh, faint blue, very light, light blue, and then you get into fancy light. So this is one step below fancy. Okay. Uh, definitely it has a noticeable, like a powder blue, I call it. Okay. Yeah, it's a very pretty. Blue. It's a beautiful, beautiful diamond. Yeah. Yes. And like, this is the very, the first blue that I've seen that I was actually able to afford. <laughs> so of course I had to say yes. 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 He said yes. <laughs> it's not hard when you're throwing <laughs> colored diamonds in front of you. Yeah. And then if you hand me that, uh, that yellow this green one here? right there, this is the, uh, one of my favorite colors in general, um, I call it the highlighter diamond. This is a vivid saturation, so it's one of the brightest saturations you can get. And it has a highlighter, like a yellow green to mm -hmm. it. And this one, even on the white background, fluoresces a... Well, I don't think the, camera, the camera's too happy about that. Well, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna make it happy. Oh, yeah. look at that. Holy smokes. Yeah. That, let me, okay. Yeah, that's, uh, that's fluorescing. The, and this is why I find fluorescence so fun. They don't always have to be, you know, boring, but yeah. Fluorescence makes diamonds so much more fun, or they can. I've actually seen uh, a piece of jewelry that has, it's almost like a dog tag, mm -hmm. and it has a gold angel with a pave diamond background and inside that pave diamond background are wings made of fluorescent diamonds oh wow so when you put the uv light to it that's when you see uh, the angels wings. cool yeah one more this one here one of my fun ones this is a fancy green caused by irradiation in the ground okay natural uh radiation yeah and a lot of times when you send in a green diamond to the GIA, um, it'll come back undetermined mm -hmm. when you're talking about the cause of right. the color. Right, Because right. irradiation is man, or you can artificially irradiate diamonds, but irradiation is what's responsible for the green color in diamonds. When they artificially color diamonds, irradiate them, they can't tell what color is gonna come out. No. They so it's a crapshoot. Yeah, they generally have a pretty decent idea. But there's no guarantees. Never. Sometimes you'll get blue, sometimes you'll get green, sometimes yeah. you'll get yellow. But. but a lot of people will take a heavily included diamond, a lot of dealers, and then have it irradiated because when it's got a body color, you can't see how bad that diamond actually is. Yeah. Color, especially when it's a deeper, deeper tone, hides quite a bit. Yeah. And this is an antique style cut uh, fancy light yellow. Cool. So I'm actually looking for some old mine cut rounds to cut around this. I'm sure there's a lot of people that'll help you with that. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> no doubt. Unfortunately, we know all those people, don't we? Yeah, <laughs> and my usual go-to is out at the moment, so I'm, I'm uh -huh. a little sad. So either I wait till Vegas or I gotta... Maybe Jeff's got something for you. <laughs> I don't care who's got it, I just want them. I was gonna do a video of Jeff's desk with him. 
oh, yeah. so he could pick things off of his desk. It's, you'll understand when we, if we actually do this video, and then he'll talk about those things. I haven't discussed it with him yet. Uh, that'd be fun to do with him. Yeah. And then here's a, a light pink, fancy light pink. But it, it's a little third of a carrot. Stone. That's cool. Oh yeah. By the way, if I do that with him, and you're available, I'll pick you up on the way up there. Mm -hmm. All right. We can do that. All right. And lastly, I'm going to show you. We've got some diamond beads. I have one strand left of these diamond beads. These are. Um, if anybody wants them, that's the last strand I have. Uh, Ninety-nine dollars for the strand. But they are natural diamonds. Send me a message if you're interested in them. Ninety-nine bucks. All right, I hope you all uh, like the show and tell that we did. Uh, what we've said here is our opinions. Right. Okay. Um, you guys, everybody has their own opinion about diamonds. Nobody's correct. Nobody's incorrect. Uh, there are people of like minds. Yeah. And, uh, but you can't dispute facts also. A lot of people out there think that Labgard diamonds are fake. I mean, uh, yeah. they're man-made, but technically... Chemically speaking, they are diamonds. Yes, and so. they're, they're man-made, they're synthetic, uh, just like, uh, oh, I'm not going to say an, an IVF baby. <laughs> <laughs> not no. going to go there. Dolly the sheep is still a sheep. That is true. Yes, Dolly the sheep is still a sheep. Yes. For those of the you who know who Dolly the sheep is. For, the, for those of us that are that old. <laughs> yeah, really. Uh, uh, but yeah, like, uh, but what's next? so what's next? Uh, the next, uh, you were talking... Um, Tourmaline. Term, well, that hmm, if you thought about a lot of diamonds. <laughs> yeah, I, I, we've got a lot of we have a lot of tourmaline beads. Oh. Uh, so we have a lot, a lot of tourmaline beads, and tourmaline comes every color, right? Yeah, it's 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 a member of what I call the Rainbow Club because you okay. can find it in every color. Um, the most recent addition to that club is the Garnet. Right, you yeah. we were talking about that I think on the first video right, about yeah. that. Did you know? that there are two operating mines in the United States, I know he knows, of tourmaline. And one is in San Diego, and one is in Maine. Yep. And, uh... Th well, there's one, two areas. Multiple mines in each area. Right. right. So two areas. In uh, is it commercial? Uh, San Diego, the mines in the Pala District, there are one... There's the Ocean View Mine, which is okay. open to the public. Um, but, uh, I think that's the only one. That's Heavy in the pinks, if I'm not mistaken. Or? Yeah, mostly pinks. Beautiful pinks. You can find uh, tourmaline, kunzite, and beryl up there. Oh wow! Yeah, because they all grow in the same pegmatite. The peg, uh, what they call it, pegmatite uh, growth growth uh, zone, if you will, the growth style. Okay, how far? When you say beryl, we talked about this. Uh, emerald. Oh, so we have emerald. I, I know. Oh no, no, no. I'm saying. In that oh, borough, oh, oh, in San oh, sorry, Diego. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, you can find morganite and aquamarine and goshenite. Okay. So colorless, light blue, and pink. Beautiful. And yeah. what about Maine? Maine is going to be tourmaline. Um, and you can actually, there's a, a range of colors from there, but mostly okay. blue greens and pinks. Cool. Yeah. Cool. So I think we'll do tourmaline next. Okay. I don't think it's a birthstone. Is it a birthstone? It is. Pink tourmaline is uh, the birthstone with opal for October. Okay. So it's the non-traditional, traditional opal, opal yep. obviously. Yeah. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and until next time. Yeah, and if you guys have any questions, type in the comments. Let yeah, us know. Yeah, we'll please. We answer. love comments, and we're we are one of those people that will reply to your comments. Yeah, that we will do for sure. You guys have a great week. Take care, y'all.